everyone, it's Nina. I just want to give you a reminder that if your dog is dealing with any sorts of issues with resource guarding, you should contact a qualified modern positive trainer, such as Adipup or anyone else. You can find trainers on the Pet Professional Guild website, petprofessionalguild.com, or leave a comment for my mom and she'll get you in touch. Hey everyone, it's Lauren Alvin with Adipup Dog and Puppy Training. I apologize for the messiest possible corner of the training center uh, in this shot, but it's the only way I don't get a bunch of lights on my glasses and I look like an alien or something um, because it's that time of day. So I apologize. Me and Nina here would like to talk about resource guarding today. Resource guarding is when a dog has something and they want to keep it. Some dogs resource guard food, uh, some dogs resource guard toys, some dogs resource guard only high value things like the resource guard a raw marrow bone but not a deer antler. Um, some dogs resource guard people so there are dogs who don't want other people or dogs around their mom or their favorite person. Uh, some dogs resource guard space like the couch or the bed or you know comfy spot somewhere that they like. Uh, it's a resource it's something that they want and that they find valuable and they're guarding it because they want to keep others away from it. Uh, some dogs only resource guard against other dogs, some dogs resource guard against people, some dogs resource guard against everything or anything they can. It is perfectly normal, natural dog communication to say, I have something, it's mine and you need to give me space because I want to keep it. That's not to say it's safe and that's not to say that it's something that you should just live with uh, because a dog who's doing it isn't comfortable. A dog who feels safe and comfortable and you know relaxed in the environment doesn't growl or snarl, snap or bite, or get tense or show whale eye. Um, and it can escalate and it can be dangerous. You can get bitten with a dog who resource guards or other dogs can get bitten or you know, it's just, it's not safe and you can address it. But it is absolutely normal. It doesn't mean your dog's a little Hitler is trying to take over the world. It doesn't mean that they're dangerous or mean. It means that they get uncomfortable when other dogs or people come around them when they've got X, Y, or Z. So it can look a couple different ways. Uh, pretty much, you know, textbook, everyone would recognize dog's got a bone, someone comes up and they go Grrr. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> but in that, there is stiffening, whale eye, the white to their eyes, snarl and a growl. Ears are probably pinned back, brows are probably furrowed. Uh, it might even be a mohawk pilo erection up their back. So growling, snarling, snapping, or biting are pretty obvious signs. Lower level signs uh, that those things might be imminent if things don't change could be whale eye, which I mentioned, where the dog either just looks out of the corner of their eye at you without moving their head, or their face gets a bit tense and you see just a little sliver of white on either side. And that is, it's just their facial muscles getting tense and it draws it back a little bit. Um, the dog might pick up what they're enjoying get up and walk away from you. So they're just increasing distance between themselves and whatever it is that they want to keep away from their goodie. They might get really stiff or just a little bit stiff. So they're eating and someone comes by and they just kind of go like that. They might even stop eating. So going from um nom 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 to a closed mouth and waiting, probably way a lie too. They might start eating harder or faster because they're trying to like, ah, this is mine. They might shove their head further in the bowl to you know, shove it all in their face, basically. Um, I've got some other info on body language and some great videos I could send you by other trainers if you wanna see more of those. If your dog resource guards, or if your dog doesn't resource guard, if you've got a puppy and you wanna make sure they don't, what you wanna do is change their brain's association or create good associations. You wanna make sure that their brain goes, I've got something good, someone's approaching me, cool. <laughs> Rather than, I've got something good, someone's approaching me, uh-oh stress out. I have to de defend myself and guard my object. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. One I call I Come in Peace, which is a very clever name from a wonderful trainer, Kelly Fahey, in, uh, oh my gosh, she's the Hunterdon, dogsmith of Hunterdon in New Jersey. Um, she calls it I Come in Peace, which is just a clever way to remember how to play a counter conditioning game with a dog who resource guards. I'm going to show you how to teach a dog how to do trade, which would be doing it on cue. And I'm gonna mention right now, walk away would be another way to do it. Um, there is a fantastic video from, ooh, I forget her name, but it's Cold Nose College in North Carolina. I'll link it in the description that teaches you how to teach your dog to walk away. And it's sort of like trade, 
um, you know, you could do all three and, you know, morph it into whatever feels best for you and your dog in your house. Uh, but it would be another cue to teach them what to do around something. So the basis of this is the dog has to feel okay with relinquishing their item and other people or dogs coming around them and their item. And that's where counter conditioning comes in. That's what uh, I come in pieces about. Once their brain, you know, the reptile brain is quiet and they can actually make decisions with their frontal cortex, then we can bring in the decisions to be made. Uh, if your dog starts to guard when someone is 50 feet away, <laughs> then you can't ask them from 20 feet away or right up next to them to trade an object because they're over threshold and they're in, you know, guarding mode. So it's too late there. So there's gonna be two roads that will eventually combine into real life. <laughs> their brain's ability to stay cool and their other part of the brain's ability to respond to cues, um, you know, will meet and they'll be able to do it when you need them to do it. So we're gonna change the dog's association, make them feel happy about it. What you do not want to do, do not do, is stick your hand in the dog's food bowl, mush it around, you don't want to stare down the dog or hover over them or try to push them away from it. Don't take stuff from your dog. If it's not an emergency, don't rip stuff out of their mouth. Um, some dogs you'll get away with it and that's totally fine, but a lot of dogs will learn that I've got something, someone's coming towards me, you know, heart rate, adrenaline, I've got to defend myself or swallow it or, you know, you can cause problems. Um, don't try to overpower or dominate your dog. Uh, they're not, no one chooses to feel stressed out. So if that's what their brain is responding with, we've got to help their brain change the way it feels about it and that will change their behavior. So I'm gonna show you, I come in peace um, with a food bowl. Pretend it's dinner, I'm just gonna smear cheese in it because Nina would just gobble it up in a second and then we'd be all done. So I'm gonna smear something in it. I don't actually give her squeeze cheese for dinner. <laughs> Wouldn't that be good? Uh, and then we'll do trade. So Nina has her bowl of cheese. I have a million dollars. I'm gonna walk by and I'm gonna say it, though it doesn't matter to her, it doesn't matter if you say it. I come in peace. Someone approaching needs good stuff for you. I'm adding rather than subtracting. I want her to associate a person walking up with good things. I'm walking pretty close to her because I know that she doesn't get stressed out by this. This isn't an issue for her. If your dog already resource guarded, this might be from like 10 feet away. So if you have a puppy and you want to inoculate against resource guarding, add, don't subtract. Instead of sticking your hand in the bowl and going, Meh, in their dinner, we're gonna go, hey, someone comes up, you get good stuff, see you later. That's all that is. I come in peace. For the next behavior, I have a cheese filled Kong. That's not a very pretty shot, there's cheese in there. <laughs> um, we're gonna teach her how to trade on cue. So we're increasing her brain's ability to stay calm and collected and not freak out when people come by her stuff. We're gonna teach her how to respond to a cue. At the same time that we're teaching her how to respond to a cue, she's also learning that good stuff happens when people come around your goodies. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple, couple variations on this if your dog doesn't give it up very easily. Um, to keep you safe and to keep them safe. If your dog gets something inappropriate before they are perfectly trained on this and spit stuff out whenever you ask, get something really good and make a Hansel and Gretel trail. Do whatever you gotta do. If it's a giant pile, that's fine because it's safer and better in the long run to just spread a bunch of chicken on the floor than to rip it out of their mouth and maybe get yourself bitten and create terrible associations for your dog and just wash out all of the foundations that you're trying to build for resource guarding. So we're gonna teach her to trade on cue. Like I said, the value of this is it gives them something to do when you need them to spit something out. It gives you a way to safely ask them to spit stuff out. And we're just reinforcing that whole people around your stuff feels good. Relinquishing things to people when asked to do so feels really good. So Nina is waiting very patiently for her calm. You can try this one or two times anytime your dog gets a chew toy, anytime they get a bully stick or their dinner in a Kong or squeeze cheese in a Kong, just trade for it once or twice and then leave them alone. We want them to learn that giving things up to people is not stressful, it feels good, good times for everybody, and eventually when they hear the sound that you make when you ask them to trade, they're just gonna go, where's my million dollars? If you got it, you can pay them a million dollars, but you got that item out of their mouth, which was the point. So 
I'm gonna give her a call. I've got my million dollars. Here you go. Good job. I'm gonna let her enjoy it a little bit. I'm gonna get out of her space. Get my million dollars. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say spit it out because we use T-R-A-D-E already. I'm gonna walk up where she can see me. I do not want to get over in her space. I'm certainly not gonna push her face off of it or anything like that, but I want her to know where I am so it's not a surprise. Of course, now you're coming out of frame. <laughs> All right, I'll come from the side of it. I want her to see me. I don't wanna stress her out over this. So I'm gonna say the word. Here we go. I'm gonna say the word, spit it out, and then I'm gonna show her what I got. She's gonna go, ooh, okay. While she is engaged with that, this mysteriously disappears. Good job. Notice that I said the word first and then showed her what I had. Eventually in that pause, take it, she's gonna spit it out on her own. All right. Spit it out. Show her what I got. Yeah, off to the side. Empty hand, picks us up, and magically disappears. Nice. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like if your dog is not doing that so easily. Let's say you haven't practiced it that much or they've got something really, really amazing, you know, like your kid's Elsa doll <laughs> or roadkill pancakes, whatever it is. Get something really good and I'm gonna make a Hansel and Gretel trail. Let's say this dog doesn't like people being very close to their good stuff and it's a little bit dangerous. I'm gonna get her all the way over there and I wanna make sure she does not see me picking this up. I don't want her to feel stressed about this. I don't want her to think that she has to guard her resource. I don't want her to feel defensive or that she has to watch me out of the corner of her eye because we're gonna ooh, sneak it away real quick. We want this to be easy, fun, delicious, happy brain, oxytocin, good chemical feelings so that when we need them to do it, they're happy to do it and they love doing it. All right, I already told you what not to do. <laughs> I will link uh, the video for Walk Away from Cold Nose College in the descriptions. They're fantastic. They've got some other great videos, uh, but that one's really helpful too. And the I Come in Peace, like I said, comes from Kelly Fahey, but it's just counter conditioning. I'll put a, a video for counter conditioning in the description too from the San Francisco Humane Society. All right, let me know if you have any questions or requests. Take care. Bye bye.